Hi and welcome to a new video. Today we will do another AMD Threadripper video, but we will not do OC. We will also not delete another chip or kill it. We will do AMD RAID. So today AMD released a free available RAID driver so you can run NVMe RAID over the CPU. So I have, well, let's say several NVMe drives. In total I have eight 960 Pro. Those drives yeah, are absolutely massive when it comes to the performance and today we will use those drives to test how good the NVMe rate on AMD Threadripper really is. So if we compare this feature to what has been available in the past, if we look for example at C270 or X299, the problem is that usually you are running NVMe rate over the PCH, the chipset, and the problem is that normally you're limited by the bandwidth between the chipset and the CPU. On C270, for example, we have the DMI 3.0 and the DMI 3.0 equals performance to four PCI Express lanes 3.0. So the problem is we have only like 3.9 gigabyte per second available. And if you use a Samsung 960 Pro, for example, read is about 3,500 3, megabyte per second and uh, write is about 2,100 megabyte per second max. So with one drive, we're almost at a limit here. So if we run two drives in RAID, for example, RAID 0 over the PCH, we are very fast in the limit of the DMI 3.0. So to solve that bandwidth limit, actually Intel came up with a feature that is called VROC, which means virtual RAID on CPU. They released this feature together with X299 during Computex. So the feature itself is actually a quite nice idea. So you can run NVMe drives over the CPU. So you bypass the, the bandwidth limit of the DMI 3.0. You can use the normal PCI Express slots like 16, a, uh, 16 times, eight times, whatever is available on your mainboard. You hook up NVMe drives there. They are connected directly to your CPU. And then you can run RAID from the CPU without any bandwidth limitations. So there are two rather big issues actually with Rerock and one issue is that you're limited only to Intel NVMe drives. So if we take a look for example um, in comparison to the 960 Pro 512 gigabyte, if we compare that with the Intel uh, 600P which is also available with 512 uh, gigabyte, the Intel drive is a, a little bit cheaper. It costs like 170 euro, while this one is like 290 euro. But then the Intel drive has only a write rate of um, 560 megabyte per second and a read rate of 1775 megabyte per second. So it's like half the speed of this drive, actually even less. So considering that you would need two Intel drives to achieve the performance of one Samsung drive and you spend more money, um, yeah, it doesn't really make much sense to spend money on Intel drives if you're a normal consumer. Then another problem is that you have to buy the VROC key. The VROC key is like a small PCB that you have to hook up to your mainboard to unlock VROC on your CPU. So without that key, you're not able to run, for example, RAID 5, RAID 10, whatever, and you have to buy that key and the key obviously costs money. I'm not sure about the real retail pricing, but I heard that it's like 100 or 200 euros and that's actually quite a lot considering that AMD is doing this feature now for free. So talking about the title of this video, I finally figured out what to do with all the PCI Express lanes of Threadripper. So if we compare the 7980XE that just got released today as well, the CPU has 44 PCI Express lanes while the 1950X a Threadripper has 64 PCI Express lanes and on a normal consumer PC, if you're a gamer, you would always use at least one VGA in the first slot. So that takes already off 16 PCI Express lanes. Deducting that we have only 28 lanes left on the Intel CPU, but we would still have 48 lanes left on the AMD CPU and it's actually quite a lot. So 48 lanes, that's, that's enough for 12 drives with full bandwidth. So that's a very cool thing that we can do that. And Today we will actually test this. So as I said before, we have eight NVMe drives and we have those neat cards. These are called Asus Hyper cards. They are pretty much adapters you can use for a normal PCI Express slot. So you can put that one in, for example, in the first 16 slot and you can run four NVMe drives at once from one adapter. In today's test, we will use the Senate Extreme and that's actually my go-to board for AMD Threadripper because it's just so extremely well-tuned when it comes to the BIOS and also the cooling solution for the VRM is quite good. 
So that's the board we will use today. And there's one more feature I would like to point out when it comes to this board and the feature is dim.2. Whoever has seen Apex boards before should be familiar with the dim.2 cards. Actually dim.2 is a very cool solution because you have this small card which is pretty much using a dim slot. That's why it's called dim.2. But the dim slot is actually connected to a PCI Express bus. So you can attach up to two NVMe drives on this small card and use this card uh, with the two drives in RAID while you can still use all of the main PCI Express slots. And that's, I think, a very cool feature. So for, for example, if you're looking to use two 960 Pro uh, drives in RAID, you can just use this card and still have all the other slots available for multi-GPU, for sound cards or whatever you need. You can still have all of those slots available. So that's why I really love actually the DIMM.2 drives. Let's go back to the hypercards. The hypercards were actually announced during Computex this year and the hypercard, as I said before, is just an adapter so you can run up to four NVMe drives of one PCI Express slot. And the cool thing is that, um, I mean, personally, I really like uh, the visuals like this. So I like to see all the NVMe drives here, but you can see there's a small fan on the back. And actually it's meant that you attach this heatsink, which also looks very, very nice. It's uh, made out of aluminium, brushed aluminium, looks very, very, very nice. Uh, so you can use the heatsink, attach it with four screws, and you can see that there are thermal pads inside, and the thermal pads will have direct contact to the NVMe drives, because yeah, we, you will be familiar with that problem that if you have NVMe drives and you have a lot of reads and writes, um, it will eventually get a little bit hot because of the controller and the controller will eventually throttle down the NVMe drive. And to prevent that, we have the fan here and we can put on the heatsink to this card and then we can get this card with the maximum performance. So the HyperCard will be available soon in retail stores. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that you cannot use them on every board and also not with every single BIOS because you have to tell the CPU in which way the slot is configured. So if we attach this one, we have to tell the CPU that it's actually splitting up the first PCI Express slot or whatever 16 slot you use into 4444. So the Sanity Extreme comes with a new BIOS. I'm not sure if the BIOS is already available, but it should be available at the point of this video. So you can go into the BIOS and you can go to onboard device configuration and then you can configure the PCI Express slots in whatever way you need them. So for example, the first 16x slot, you can configure to 4444, and then you can just plug in the drive and you can just use four drives without any issues. As I said before, we will actually use two of the hypercards with eight NVMe drives total. So we have to set up the first uh, 16 slot and the second 16 slot with 4444 in the BIOS and set the PCI Express slots to RAID. That's pretty much all you have to do in the BIOS. What you could also do is set interleaving to channel. The thing is the bandwidth of the drives and the performance really depends also on your CPU and memory speed. So we noticed that you really have to push the CPU hard clockwise and also the memory to get the maximum performance out of those drives. So ideally you overclock your CPU to the maximum. Actually we're running almost 4.2 gigahertz on this CPU and the CPU is running really on the edge. So it's not 24 seven stable, but it's just to show what's actually possible running in those eight drives. The memory in this case is running uh, 32 gigabyte at 3200 C16. So that's also quite high memory clock. So enough talking, let's just go straight over to the results. Actually, we used IO meter as benchmark for testing those drives. We also tested ASSD and also Crystal Disk Mark. What I noticed is that some of those benchmarks, ASSD and also Crystal Disk Mark, they really vary in performance. So sometimes, for example, I was running Crystal Disk Mark and I had like 12 gigabyte per second uh, read. And the next run, it dropped down to two gigabyte per second read. While when I was copying a file, it was always really, really fast. So there must be something that's um, kind of wrong with the benchmarks. So we used IO meter because that one rate uh, produced really, really good results and especially consistent results, which was really important to do this video. So let's go over and finally take a look at the results. And you can see we're running IO meter and this was IO meter read and you can see that the performance is around 27 gigabyte per second and the performance is actually absolutely massive. I mean, this is almost like DRAM speed. So that also explains why we had to push the CPU so far with the clock and also push the memory really, really high. 
because that helps to increase the bandwidth on the CPU. So for sure, if you're running 24 seven, if you run lower clocks, like let's say 3.8 gigahertz and memory clocks, maybe 2800 or something like that, you will have a little bit less performance, but you will still have very, very high bandwidth. And considering that the fact is the, the feature is for free, that only you have to download the AMD RAID driver and then you have to set it up in Windows, you have to use a BIOS that supports this on your motherboard, but except for that, you don't need anything. You only have to buy the NVMe drives. Maybe you have to get an adapter card depending on how many drives you actually want to use. But all in all, it's very great and absolutely nice uh, to see that the feature will be available for free. In this way, I hope that you liked this video. Let me know if you have any questions about the, A uh, the AMD rate. Put it down in the comments. I hope you liked this video. See you soon.